at WWDC 2021, Apple promised a new Swift Playgrounds experience for the iPad coming later this year. With only days to spare in late December, they released Swift Playgrounds version 4. While much of Swift Playgrounds 1 through 3 is still there, Playgrounds 4 for the iPad changes the game from being just a toy to a mobile development and prototyping environment. Hi, I'm Steve Lipton, author and host of Swift Playgrounds Application Development, the iOS Development Tip Weekly Series, and Swift UI Essential Training in the LinkedIn Learning Library. In the coming weeks, I'm going to post some videos to show you how to best use the new Playgrounds 4. In this video, I'm going to show you around the new app by making a demo app familiar to those who've taken the Swift UI Essential Training and Swift Playgrounds application development. So here we are in the application, which does not look much different than its predecessors. Two changes to notice is the documents with rounded square icons that I have on top here. These are apps which are different from playground files, which have the rectangle for the iPad version and the one with the hammer for the Xcode version of playgrounds. In a very welcome change, you'll notice on the bottom left, the add an app button. This makes a new app file. Unlike previous versions, this does not need an internet connection to load, so you can work offline as easily as online when creating apps. I'll tap it, and a new app appears above, with a place marker for an icon. Now, I'm going to go ahead and change the name of this by tapping the name here. And I'm going to go ahead and delete what I've got here and put in here, play for Hooli Pizza, and I'll hit done, and that changes my name. Now I'm going to go ahead and tap the icon to open that file. There's a place marker code here, and on to the right, you'll see that the app preview already starts running and runs that code for you. Before I go changing code, I'd like to show you a few of the setup features. So I'm going to go ahead and tap the sidebar icon up here. And to give myself just a little bit more room, I'm also going to hide the preview by clicking the button on the upper right. At the top is an Add Files button. You can add new files or import existing code. For example, I'm going to add a new Swift file. So I'm just going to hit the button and hit Swift File. And it gives me a new file name, and I'm going to change this one to Detail View. Now, I'm using a keyboard here. Uh, it will work perfectly fine without a keyboard, but to make it a little more clear and a little faster, I decided to use a keyboard for this exercise so you can see everything that's going on. All right, I'm just going to hit Return here, and now I have a Detail View. And you can see on the side, it's Swift UI file, and that's all it's got in there. And you can change the import to Foundation if you really wanted to. And I've put on my desktop some files and assets you can download from GitHub. So I'm going to try an actual file here. So I can go into here, and instead of going to Swift File, I'm going to go to Insert From, go to Desktop, go to Setup. And I have here my menu model.swift that I've used in many of the courses that I've taught. So I'm going to go ahead and select that. And it loads in, and if you take a look at it, you'll see there's the code for our menu model for our application. So you can import Swift code that easily of anything that you need to have available to you for your application. So I'm going to hit the Add button here, and you can see here that you can add from both a photo and again from files by using the Insert From. I'm going to hit the Insert From here. And I've got a bunch of images. I could add this image here, for example, if I wanted to. And that would add the image in directly. But I can bulk add images as well. So I can go to Insert From. I'm going to go into this pizza image here. Hit Select. You get little circles. And I can hit all the little circles. Hit Open. And that loads all my images in, so here they are. So I can actually look at all those images. And that's how easy it is to load your assets. On the sidebar at the top is something called App Settings. So I'm going to hit this, and we get another window. It allows you to, first of all, change the name of your app. So you can hit the name My App and change it to something else. Now, it doesn't have to match what your file name is, but for convention purposes, I generally do that. 
and hit done, and now you've changed the name of it. You can also change your icon, and this is kind of fun. You could first of all change it by placeholder. You can also change your accent color, which will change your placeholder as well, then change the color. But you can also use the custom feature. And if you hit custom, you get this selection of how you want to import it. You can import it from your photos if you want to, or you can import it from files. And I'm going to just use the file one here. I'm going to go back over here to this image 1682. And you'll see something interesting pop up. And it says scale image. It will actually make all the icons you need for this application directly. And it looks to see if it's a 1024 by 1024 pixel image. And then it makes any other extra ones you need if you need those. So I'm just going to hit the scale image here. And it makes my image for me. And there's my custom icon. And I can hit done here. And we can actually go out of the app for a sec. And you'll see that I now have a custom icon here of my surfer girl. So we can now go back into there. And we're back into the app again. One more thing on those settings that I do want to mention is down here on capabilities. Capabilities, as you can see here, allow you to set up all the permissions, stuff, and the libraries necessary for certain types of operations. Mostly things that are... Uh, using either another app or such as the photos app if you go down to the bottom here or different pieces of a hardware so you can use Bluetooth or the camera for example which I'll cover more of in a different video so now we're all set up here though and I am now in my my app code and I can start to look at that to see what I'm going to change here now I've got this menu model so the first thing I'm going to do with my code is set up the menu model. And I'm going to start it by going into content view. And I'll hit return here and put a state variable. This is all in Swift UI, as you can tell. So we'll be using state variables, and this will be our model. So I'm going to call this menu. And I'm going to use a menu item collection. And you can see how we're going to be doing auto insertion is I can start typing something in and it'll pop up here and I can look at it. Now you'll notice it says return here. You either tap that on the screen or hit return if you have a keyboard and that'll give you that item. Now that I've actually set that up, I'm going to go back into my app and it's going to tell me that I have a content view that's missing. So I'm going to hit the error. And it will let me fix the error like you can get in Xcode. And it now will ask me for the menu name. And I'm going to put in my initial one. And that's for menu model. So we can start here by tapping that and typing menu model. And there's menu model there. So I can go here, tap on that, and return. I'll put some parentheses. And then you'll see that there's a variable on menu model called menu, which is my menu. So I'm going to just put that in there. And I've now got my content view set up and my model set up. Now with my model set up, I'm going to add one more thing here. And let's just go to at. I'm going to go to state variable. And recall this one selected. So I could select from my menu of pizzas. I'm particular pizza and that's going to be a menu item so I'm going to go into menu you can see there's menu item so I can go that but I'm actually going to add one in here so I'm going to use test menu item which happens to be constant so that I could do things exactly like this all right now I've got that set I'm going to change the place marker code with the name description and image of the selected pizza so I'm going to go ahead and do that next so I have it here in the body and it's in a v stack which is fine I'm going to go ahead and hit select as text here, and I can drag my cursor with my finger and go ahead and delete that with a keyboard. And now I can start typing things in here. Now, you've got two different ways of typing things in. One you've seen already is auto insertion, but you can also hit the plus at the top here and load things in directly from here. So I'm going to start here and put in an image, and I can load the image right there. It gives me an image name. I tap the image name. So I'm going to go ahead and put my name in here. 
So that's going to be backslash and then in parentheses selected dot ID. And then after that, we'll put in the underscore 100 W at 3x. Okay. And I'm also going to put in two text fields. And I'll do quickly that selected dot name and text selected dot description. And there's description. Okay. I can also add modifiers. And if I'm on one of these text lines here, I can add the modifier this way too. So I just hit the modifier button. And there's all my modifiers. I can now look for one. So let's just put in F O N for font. There's my font and in it up it comes. And then I can you'll notice it's put the dot notation in for you. And I can now tap on here a dot and I can see all the ones I need and I'm just going to make this one title and then I'll do the same thing here this time I'll do it from keyboard and there we go so now I've got myself essentially my code as I need it I can go ahead and hit the preview button on the side there and you can see that the code is already writing itself out and we could see it in the app preview. So the next thing I want to do is make a little detail view to add to this code. Now you'll see over here that I can do that from my sidebar and I can do it from like this. But there's another way you can do it because you can close this up to give yourself some more space and you can even move this over a bit so you can uh, have more space for your coding. And that is at the top there there are tabs and you can just hit those tabs to move between your program modules. And I want to show you something else about the autocomplete that's very important when you're playing with playgrounds is the autocomplete will do some very interesting things if you type a protocol into it. So for example, I could type in view here. Now view of course would set up the whole Swift UI view is that's what we're talking about here and that's exactly what it does. If I set view and return, both my struct with the view and with the previews is set up here. And as you can see below it, it's ready for a refactor. So I can go ahead and type in here detail view. And it fills it all in for me. And there I go. I'm already ready to go on this. Now I'm going to go ahead and set up my detail view once I've done that. And I've got a binding variable I'm going to put in here. I'm going to call it menu item. And that will be a menu item. And then in my code, I'm going to make an H stack. And we'll put an image. And we'll use that same nomenclature we had before. So I'm just going to do, again, a string interpolation. And it'll be menu item. Dot. And we're going to use ID again. And then underscore 100 W at 3X. All right. And we got an image here. But you'll also notice that we have an error here. So I'm going to go ahead and hit return. And that's because I made the binding variable, but I now have to fix it in the previews. And you can see there's the error right there. And it's telling me to go ahead and insert menu item binding. So I'm going to go ahead and insert it and fix it by tapping the fix. Now I'm going to go tap on the bent binding menu item and I can change this to a constant actually. And there it is constant. And I'll use that test menu item like so. And there we go. We have our test menu item. Now, once I've got that, you can see I've got rid of all my errors. You'll see there's a chevron in the lower right corner that's blue. It's active. If you tap that, preview is actually working. So I'm going to go back up here to image, and I'm going to add one more line to this H stack. And that's going to be 
a text for the menu name. Now, I also want to make sure this is resizable and scale to fit. And we'll put in text. And I'm going to do menu item dot name. I have this entry ready to go. I now go back to content view and add in my code a list using that detail view. And with the latest version of Swift UI, I can actually do this and put in a binding variable here. So I can iterate over the binding variable. I talk about that in my iOS development tips weekly if you want to check one about that out. And there's detail view. And we're going to put a menu item in here. And there it is. It's starting to work already. Now I'm going to do a little bit of cleaning up of it by using a frame. And I'm going to do a height of 150. And finally, let's get a little interaction here. You can see, even using it on the preview now, I can actually scroll through these. Uh, I'm going to do one more thing I'm going to add here, and that's going to be an on tap gesture. And there it is. And that will be that selected will equal menu item on a tap. All right, and I've got my app. And in the preview, if I start tapping these guys, you'll see that they start changing. So that's all you need to do. You can make it bigger here in preview and start doing it here too, if you wish. But the other way to do this, and I'm going to zoom this back a little bit first, is you can hit the play button at the top. And that launches it as an app. You'll see it's got a little banner on top, which goes away, and then you got a red Swift icon telling you that you're running in Swift Playgrounds. And you can start tapping away here, too, and you'll get whatever pizza you'd like here. To stop the app, you can go ahead and hit that red button, and you'll get a little screen that tells you you could restart. You could show console if you want to, and I can, I'll hit done and show you the console. You can also hit it by hitting that little button on the bottom here. And I'm going to go back into there. Delete app data and restart if you are in the middle of one of these things and want to restart and try to figure out some problems with it. Or you can also just stop, and you can hit the stop button. And that stops the app, and you're back to where you started. So you can see it's done a lot of very sophisticated things here. And it's a very sophisticated app. It's got a lot more available for you. As you can see here, we even have your SF symbols and colors ready for you to go as you're working. So it's very easy to use. Um, I've been doing this again with a keyboard, but it works perfectly fine without a keyboard and doesn't take a lot of time to get used to non-keyboard use, and the regular screen keyboard works fine. Much of what I wanted in Swift Playgrounds is finally here. On my iPad, I can create the modules I need for larger projects away from my Mac. If working with a group, I can show and share prototypes quickly and easily with our iPad users. I discussed much of this in my Swift Playgrounds application development, but this new version is leaps and bounds over what is there.